You can always rely on Lawrence to be a bit dramatic. And so, if nobody wants his essay, The Future of the Novel, Thomas Seltzer can burn it. There was no need, though. It would find a home in the Literary Digest International Review in April. But perhaps he reacted like this because the censors did want to eradicate his writing. Women and Love had been selling well, but the New York Justice John Ford wanted the loathsome book withdrawn after discovering his daughter reading a copy. He'd do best to leave the tree of knowledge alone, warned Lawrence in a telegram that would be published in the New York Times. The judge won't succeed in chopping it down with his horrified hatchet. Many better men have tried and failed. Up on the Del Monte Ranch, in the Lobo Mountains, Lawrence was loving life with his two Danish friends, Nud Merold and Kai Gotshi. The days were filled with hard graft, the evenings with song and conversation. Frida informed her mother, Lawrence has a cold, chopped ice for hours in a frozen over brook. Gotshi had been painting Lawrence. He has his arms folded and looks like he's in a right grump. They say it has got my get rid of Mountsia face. And get rid of his American literary agent he did. This was mainly because Seltzer refused to work with him and because Lawrence felt Mountsia didn't believe in him. He was against me, inwardly. Mountsia had visited Lawrence at the ranch in December and was still in Taos, so Lawrence was able to tell him in person. However, Frieda reports that after doing this, Lawrence took some sandwiches and went off, and I was left alone with him for lunch. It's a productive period for Lawrence. He completes the proofs for the captain's doll and the fox, and requests the proofs for the ladybird. A complete manuscript of Birds, Beast and Flowers is sent to Seltzer, which, when you have time to read it, you will agree it is a remarkable collection. And he must make time to read it because he wants to see a perfect manuscript before I leave America and I want to leave soon. Concerned at the poverty facing the Danes, he wants Merrill to do the jacket. John Middleton Murray is consoled over the death of his wife, Catherine Mansfield, who died on the 9th of January. Lawrence was pretty nasty to Mansfield which may have been partly because of his own ill health and the subsequent stigma attached to it. He views her dying at one point as a weakness, something she failed to control. One must fight or die like Catherine. But he does attempt an apology of sorts. I wish it needn't all have been as it has been. I do wish it. And to prove his sincerity, he instructs Seltzer to send Murray copies of three of his books. After a winter in the Lobo Mountains, it's time to move on again. Mexico is his next intended stop, and so Seltzer is asked to send over a copy of Terry's Guide to Mexico so that he can prepare. Bessie Freeman is asked whether she can provide useful introductions to anybody nice, and Spud Johnson is given a breakdown of travel costs so that he and Witterbriner can join them. Frieda suggests the reason for their latest move being Lawrence wants to go to Mexico. He thinks he might write his American novel there. You know, he would like to write a novel of each continent, if possible. England may be off the cards, but there is a suggestion a reconciliation. At the moment, I can't come to England. Something inside me simply doesn't let me. I mistrust my country too much to identify myself with it anymore, and it still gives me a certain disgust. But this may pass.